Well, if you're watching this recording, we are doing uh, the first part of the public retrospective uh, for Google Summer of Code uh, 2020. Uh, just to clarify, we are doing public uh, retrospective for the organization. Uh, for projects, we recommend uh, all teams to have their own retrospectives. Uh, yeah, we know that uh, many teams have already done that. And this feedback is most likely private. Uh, but yeah, for organization level, we rather prefer to have a public retrospective. For that, we have sent a form uh, where everyone could provide feedback. And if you haven't done it yet, please do so. It takes well, maybe 10 to 15 minutes and uh, it will be much appreciated. Uh, today, the plan is not to finish the form, but uh, just to go through feedback we have already received and get feedback from participants of this call and mostly to discuss uh, what could be improved and what we would like to change. So, um, before we begin, I suggest that uh, those who haven't uh, submitted uh, feedback yet uh, sp speak a bit about uh, key highlights. Uh, so we have a number of students who participated, but um, and if you could, uh, it would be appreciated if you just share what's your impression, what uh, were the main advantages of GSO, and what were the biggest challenges for you. Rishab, would you be fine if you start from you? Uh, yes, Oleg, sure. Okay. So uh, I think uh, what I've written here, so if you see the last, uh, the highly active community point, that is what I wrote as a, feed, as a key highlight for me. So uh, one of the first impression I got was, which is, which is very important for me personally, is that um, uh, money is not the driving factor for someone to work uh, or to contribute to something uh, for for a, for a project uh, of such for such a large scale. When when uh, when I saw uh, the amount of time my mentors and uh, in general the Jenkins community, um, uh, the people they they give within this community for for my project, the technical advice I was being um, I was being given and the time they've been provided, I I, I that personally is is really motivating for me to do this in future uh, because I, I I personally was not aware of how open source uh, community works, what what is the motivation behind a person to contribute uh, in an open source project. Uh, and I, I think I've, I've learned a lot um, in terms of, um, in terms of the reasons why someone would do that. And I think that's, that's a great thing. That was a great thing for me. I, uh, the second highlight would be uh, the blogs. While the pro while I was doing the project, I was not. Um, I did not. I would say I would be honest. I was for the first phase and the, the second phase. I was not. I didn't consider the blogs as as important as the coding or the research tasks I had uh, during the phase. But as I was ending the nearing the end of the project and I was writing my final blog, I realized that uh, there is no point of right developing two or three features which you send to the production. And um, if you're not able to present them uh, in, in, a, uh, in an easy or uh, compact manner to people who do not have the time to go through your code or to the developments you've done throughout the three months. So what I want to say is writing a blog is a great way to reflect on whatever you've done in each phase. And it's a great way for, for other people to understand what you've done because what you're dying, uh, trying to do uh, through writing that blog is to, uh, to, to provide an abstract concept of what you've done throughout that phase. And, and actually that's a difficult task when you, when you, when trying to solve a complex problem and you, and you, and you start writing a blog, it's, it's actually, uh, it's a challenging task to, um, make the complex concept simple enough so that people who do not have maybe more than a minute to understand what you're doing and be impressed about what you uh, maybe impressed enough to actually look and use what you want to provide to the user. So I think it's a very, uh, what I, um, as a suggestion for my, it was a suggestion for myself and I think for the future students is that uh, they should not start writing the blog before uh, maybe two or three days of the deadline. They should 
do that before the week the mentors should get a draft of it they should review it first and it it should be as important as the coding task although it's not required by google um, it's a great uh, i think it's a great uh, addition by the jenkins community but it should be uh, it should uh, the weight provided to the uh, to that task should be equal to the uh, weight we provide to the coding tasks uh, in each phase yeah i think that Yeah, and what were the biggest challenges for you? Okay, biggest challenge for me was to actually plan how to. Um, so in my project, what was difficult for me was that we, it was not straightforward coding tasks we could design. Uh, it was not just designing a feature and then delivering it to production. Before that, we 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 had a significant amount of research we had to do. to understand so my 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 project was performance improvements in git plugin so to to improve performance we first needed to find areas where we could improve the performance so now uh, doing that planning for the, the, the whole uh, this whole project it was difficult for me because i uh, i could not gauge the amount of time it would take for me to research or to you know explore uh, time i would take in the exploration to find uh, 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 an area within the git plugin where i could improve the performance so i would i would say i was not um, i was not sure at least during phase 1 how much amount of time i should give to the spikes where which we use in the agile methodology that basically researching the um, uh, if we do not have a time frame for those tasks balancing that with the coding tasks was a difficult aspect for me within the project and then um the second thing which was challenging for me was to uh take the code from my personal id to production i did not i i think i uh did not estimate that that the process would take much more time especially for um for a for a plugin which is used wide, which which has such a wide audience that the planning to just release a single feature is it requires much more um, um i would say in the 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 developer should be much more informed before even uh, planning the feature that how much time it would take to deliver it to production so knowing those two things uh, not knowing but maybe uh, uh, i could have done better in those two uh, frontiers planning and uh, mm -hmm. it's basically planning yes mm -hmm. so how would you expect uh, to understand that uh, before the project starts so or what you be in anticipation uh, for this information uh, when uh, should uh, have we discovered uh, the uh, server heads and plans for them okay so so you're ask so this is uh, in particular uh -huh. to the application phase uh, or before that yeah so for you it's application phase right uh yes actually i when i was uh, whatever i'm saying i was saying it in perspective of the whole in general gsoc project not uh -huh. uh, because of course i think before while writing the proposal or before doing the project it would be difficult to um understand how much time it would take uh, for a student to write a code and to take it to production uh -huh. but maybe uh, i would say i'm not sure if if it's something which is necessary but if there was um, uh, maybe like a like a caution uh cautionary advice that uh, from the mentor that okay um uh since uh, the project you are about to start uh, it has a huge um, we are responsible for a huge uh, uh user base whatever even uh, whatever you plan to do just make sure that the features you are planning it, it the amount of time it's going to take to write it to code it and then to test it and then to um uh, release it is is considerable so count that time when you're thinking about doing ambitious uh, maybe uh, thinking about doing ambitious um, features or it just it just would be uh, it would uh, make sure that the uh, proposal or 
the um, after the proposal planning is better. Uh -huh. Yes, I, I'm not sure if this is something which um, which is uh, which could be generalized. I'm not sure if this was the experience for everyone uh, within the project. This is my personal um, view for the project. Yeah. It's definitely valid, and it's definitely something to be in to process. Because yes, student guidelines, uh, presentations to students, inputs uh, during phases. Uh, yeah, that's why we do retrospective because uh, even if we uh, do not uh, act on that too much, probably it's something uh, that needs to be documented explicitly so that mm. students see that when they prepare or when uh, that teams uh, see that when uh, they do planning during community bonding. Because mm. uh, for me, yeah, during application phase, it's great to know that. But uh, yeah, the only way to actually know that is to try out submitting some pull requests um, and looking at how it uh, proceeds. And the alternate way is during community bonding when all the team works together, mentors have experience about operating within a particular component and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, um, uh, doing uh, adjustments for the plan during community bonding phase. I like your suggestion for community that community bonding, particularly for Rishav, that probably would have been a, a very healthy place for us to assure that we did a good job as mentors of reviewing during community bonding. That was a time when I felt like I was I was not as effective at reviewing as I should have been. And so that would have been that would have been a place where we could have done a better job planning by by more active reviews during community bonding of every change that's being proposed and getting it all the way to production. Yeah, so our expectation, yeah, so I just opened our documentation. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, this is something, uh, well, so what we have, uh, we yeah, continue to discuss and plan the project with community and mentors, to define objectives, expectations, uh, define the project plan, etc. Uh, but yeah, maybe something like adjust the plan to the project's uh, rules of engagement or something like that would be reasonable here. Mm. Yeah, agree. Because there, there certainly are Google Summer of Code projects which were in lower, lower demand in terms of what it takes to get to production, right? So, so there's a varying thing, varying level of difficulty there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, so I just uh, might uh, suggest detection, maybe we can follow up on. Uh, but yeah, it's mostly to demonstrate how we would be processing that. Yeah, we have spent uh, considerable time to review this particular item, but yeah, I think uh, it's important to demonstrate how we usually handle it in the retrospective. So next, yeah, we will be reviewing these action items based on feedback and see what exactly we schedule, we will create tasks, um, and hopefully it will be reflected uh, for the next year. Okay. I suggest to move on. So, Teja, would you like uh, to share your feedback? Okay, yes, I'd love to. So, where should I start from the highlights? Yeah. Okay. I think the first highlights is about uh, uh, the mentors. We have more than one mentors for for each project. Uh, um, and I think from different mentors, uh, I can learn different things. Like uh, uh, like team has mm, has taught me a lot about uh, uh, how to be how to manage this project from a, a view as a, as a manager of this project, not not just a, a programmer. Um, and uh, he and he encourages me to do a lot of uh, outreach things like uh, doing. Uh, 
a meetup and uh, helps me deploy uh, the the plugin to the set.jenkins.io. I think those things uh, just helps me uh, learn the whole process uh, uh, to manage a, 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 a software during its life cycle. And uh, from Wooly, I just learned how to, uh, he, he teach me, he taught me many tools, uh, static and NSS tools, and, uh, and, teach, and taught me many principles on how to build a, a robust um, a bug of, uh, uh, a software software with less bug and uh, it, it, so I think mentors are just uh, taught me from different uh, uh, from different views and uh, I think the second part is uh, that in Jenkins in during the Google Summer of Code we can see that our product uh, our uh, deliverable uh, has rarely been used by other users like I have seen and some users start using my plugins and they I give some feedbacks as issues or progress. And I can see there are some installations um, growing every every month. So I think that uh, uh, encourages me to, uh, to contribute more in open source and it gives me more confidence. And, and I think that's important for a, 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 a green hand at this uh, in, in the industry. It's, uh, it's uh, the highlights I can think about now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And what were the main challenges for you? Uh, well, the challenges, uh, but I think first one is the languages, but I think that's m more a personal uh, issue than the community. And so, and the second one is, I think we have many uh, we have many documents about the details, uh, like we have documents for our uh, even each extension point, uh, how to write a plugin and, and such such kind of things. Um, but I think uh, it would be helpful if we have some like top level design documents. Uh, I, I just like uh, uh, we, we did it in the community bonding and we wrote some top level ar architecture. Uh, document and uh, I think if you, uh, I think if we, uh, we can, uh, if Jenkins could provide such documents, it would be helpful uh, for the uh, green hand for uh, in Jenkins. And uh, I, I remember when I when I was first Jenkins, uh, I read it, I I get get to know those things from some YouTubers from third party uh, web pages, uh, but not from the Jenkins official. Uh, of, of official site, so I think the top level uh, architecture document or even just some object graphs uh, are useful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's totally a little big. Yeah, thanks for that. Any other obstacles you experienced? Uh, 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 currently, I don't have other uh, challenges, but um, but can we just uh, add up on the other challenges if I can came up with them after the meeting? I just uh, yeah, that's perfectly fine. Again, we are just starting, so uh, this will be a lengthy process. And yeah, when I say two weeks, it's rather wishful thinking. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so uh, yeah. Uh, feel free to add anything later. Okay, moving on then. So, Nick, uh, would you like to share something? Uh, yeah, just to um, okay. So, key highlights with respect to my entire project, or um, so like key highlights with respect to what? Uh, could you please? Well, uh, we had a target on uh, feedback. Uh, for your experience of interacting with the organization uh, during the JSOC. So again, okay, so uh, your key highlights of my, my project basically, right? Uh, okay. Um, of okay, your so experience with the project, let's say so. Experience with the, okay. Um, oh. As, okay, so, okay, so if I start off with the community, I think, you know, one of the biggest highlights, uh, uh, one of the biggest advantages of with Jenkins was, I think, uh, 
really great community so uh, that's been mentioned before but i would like to reiterate that um uh, the my the team i got uh, you know uh, with respect to mentors and with respect to even other contributors who um, were helping on during the entire course of the project was, was awesome so um, you know i was getting good code reviews uh, i was um, getting you know we were having very interesting design discussions uh, during our uh, bi weekly meetings so that was amazing uh, you know understanding um, my basically getting to learn better coding practices um, you know and actually um, convince that you know get being convinced that okay this design is the best for our best solution for our problem so that was really nice um we were able to uh, follow our um, uh, timeline really well so that was also something uh, i think that was another highlight um we were able to deliver uh, the changes that we had proposed to the community on time so that was a good highlight i think um and uh, i think uh, yeah other i and i think i would be just repeating my uh, the things we discussed in our retrospective meeting uh, i think we mentioned everything over there also uh, the retrospective we had for our project so um, yeah i think uh, so only positive things from my side i think a uh, plus one on ev- everything that uh, others mentioned so yeah yeah, yeah so, so uh, have we also had a ha- we had a hack fest that was nice um so hack fest was awesome um yeah writing getting to so yeah so i think with the blogs that i should mentioned it it actually uh, i think with, in the future also now i have something uh, you know uh, solid that i can go back to and see what my thought process was back then uh and have something for myself so those blogs are amazing for the community also for me also personally and so blogs also and those uh, videos that we made during our presentations so so that was really nice i think that we did uh, uh and that you know they so the org admins decided to take forward so that was really nice uh i think even gsoc office hours were being held uh, so i think i attended a few of them but that was really nice to you know uh see if uh, anything was going wrong or something so you know i knew that there was a gso office hours happening every week so that was also nice um yeah i think i missed uh, maybe a thousand things but yeah yeah that's fine again uh, if you see something feel free to it um yeah you know for us it's important uh, and thanks a lot uh, for any item you had and what were the challenges for you mm, biggest challenges uh, i think uh, the one uh, i think uh, okay so i think we pretty much know that adoption was a challenge at least for my project particularly uh, and uh, and i think one and it was not a, of a challenge but i think much of a learning experience for me that i had to you know uh so we created the jep also so i had to you know get community uh support behind it so our design doc- decisions and documents had to be really well planned uh so that's um, maybe a challenge but also something i learned lot out of from so yeah that was also so i i'm not sure if by challenge you mean something that we need to change in the future so if if that is the case then maybe not at this point but in a in a good way challenge then of course this yeah okay it's not to do but well okay yeah so from your point of view in future years uh, does it make sense uh, to do such uh, projects uh which in uh, well a lot of hardcore changes and hence uh, great challenges for adoption would you advise to do them or would you advise to actually, uh, to focus on something else instead mm, so i mean i think um so i don't think that's yeah i i don't think that's a wrong thing i mean 
I mean, of course, we should go ahead. Uh, I mean, it was something that was required, and I think uh, we should keep doing. I think yes, definitely, we should architecture focus projects. Yes. Um, so, 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 do you mean like changes to Jenkins core? Uh, so that's what what you had in mind. Uh, the so there is a case when uh, a project has uh, significant community value especially uh -huh. strategically like changing architecture but at the uh -huh. same time it is most likely to have challenges during adoption and during the feedback cycle during the project so basically yeah, for example Keja was working on github uh, checks and uh, they were able to facilitate feedback really quickly but on external fingerprint storage it was quite opposite uh, mostly due to the project specifics though it also has a quite high community value Right. Um, I think so. So, so the two things you mentioned first was uh, changes architecturally. I think that is a good thing because that gets uh, people to understand Jenkins core as well. So, mm -hmm. so, so, I think we know that you know uh, getting contributors there also is one of the challenges. So, I think that is a good thing. Um, as far as adoption, at least my understanding is it's it, it may be a bit hard to predict it beforehand um i think that may be the case i so so i'm not sure if you can really say at the start that how how good an adoption you are going to get so well in some cases it's possible to predict yeah. that adoption will be relatively low right right because uh, yeah there are deliverables which can be shipped to users quickly and which can generate a lot of excitement like uh, resolving a particular problem let's say providing integration for machine learning or github checks uh, and which have user facing uh, there might be features which have which face administrators for example windows services and uh, there might be features which actually focus on architecture and uh, it will take a while until it gets to users so, for example, yeah, we created external fingerprint storage, assuming that somebody creates um, a plugin which heavily relies on traceability and observability of uh, items in Jenkins. It will be really useful to our end users, but it will take a while until it gets to users. It's not something which can happen in three months. Right. So, yeah. All of that is still uh, valid types of the project. So for me, I rather self-question whether such kind of project is ideal for JSOC. Mm -hmm. So I think, I, yeah, I would say yes, but yeah. <laughs> okay. So I think we need to put proper disclaimers. Them. So maybe something like that. Danger, it's a hardcore project. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm, anything else from you, Sumit? Uh, that would be it. If anything, I'll add to the document later. Mm. So, Mark, would you like uh, to add something for highlights and challenges? Or we no, can I, process mentor feedback later and focus more on student feedback. I, I like focusing on student feedback and my comments are actually already in the document from answering the survey. So, so yeah, let's focus on students. Okay, then um, we could talk about application phase. Uh, so, from your point of view, what could we improve and what changes would you suggest for the next uh, year? So, what we uh, got as feedback that maybe we should use October 1st to get students familiar uh, more with the code base, and that uh, projects need to touch multiple plugins uh, to get additional complexity. Okay. 
this uh, I'm not sure who provided this feedback. I'm just yeah, so that was yeah. that was one from Rishab and from me. I, I think I'm the one who actually wrote the text, but we needed to. Oh. Rishab had to change Git client and Git plugin, both under control of the mentors, but also needed to submit pull requests to the GitHub branch source, the GitLab branch source, and mm -hmm. and that that was a, a a complexity we could have predicted from the beginning had we thought about it, but we just didn't think enough about it. And so it was a, oh yeah, it was predictable. We just missed the fact that a multi-component project will be more challenging than a, ch a project that is changing only one component. Mm, it happens quite often. So sometimes we can call it collateral benefit. So for example, if we change something and we see an opportunity to improve something nearby for example submitting a patch to upstream library or to upstream component or the Jenkins core it's definitely an advantage so sometimes it uh, complicates deliverables if your committed project deliverables depend on that so well we experienced it in f a few times though we will actually able to predict uh, such changes uh, but yeah again I think it's it, subject for community bonding. Uh, so for example, uh, verifying the scope of changes. Right, and, and I think that that is a good one that would have been fit well into community bonding if we'd, if we'd thought more carefully about, oh, this is going to happen this way and this way and this way. Had we done a better job of predicting the future, we probably would have had a, a better experience on actually arriving at the future. And well, Okay, so yeah, we can add something like that. Okay, any additional items we could improve? Especially question to students. So all students on the call contributed uh, a lot uh, during uh, the application phase. So if there is anything uh, we could do to improve your experience, uh, it would be nice to know about that. So I believe the, all of the students that were accepted were active participants in the Hackfest that, was ha that yeah. happened in May. And, and for me, that, is, that, that really did matter a bunch. That was very important. That gave us a, a, a phase, even before community bonding, where we, we could interact with people they could see and understand. Right. Yeah, the feedback comments. So, um, yeah, I, I, so one point that I think uh, I mentioned this before also in the project uh, retrospective, but I think so. I'll keep let's keep it here also because I think it's a big thing uh, in what did go well uh, before the application period was uh, Jenkins was one of the first communities to have the ideas page uh, live for the next year. So by, I think, um, November or December, uh, Jenkins had a GSOC 2020 ideas page. And I could just Google this, that uh, GSOC 2020 ideas page. And uh, so Jenkins was the top result there. So so if I wanted to start something early, uh, so that, that, that opportunity I had with Jenkins that I did not have with, you know, so other communities that maybe get their project ideas later. So, so that quick, that uh, opportunity for me to start early was that, that idea page gave. So I think that's a great thing that we should definitely do. And I think that's ingenious to consider, for instance, if I were to offer Git plugin improvement ideas as part of Hacktoberfest, and start touting them on, on social media. You wanna try Google Summer of Code? Here's your test drive. I think that's, I, I don't know that anybody would be interested, but I think it's an, int it's a, an intriguing idea to, to promote more actively. Hey, here are some ideas that we might pick for Google Summer of Code. Hacktoberfest's your chance. No, I, I think you're onto something. That, that sounds good. That's definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was actually tempted uh, to introduce 2021 project ideas today. I started working uh, 
the website, but yeah, finally I decided to split it out to a separate pull request. Um, but yeah, most likely it will happen in a few days. So if someone has any project ideas, you can already start thinking about them and submitting them to the mailing list. Okay. And just just one last point and what did go well um, even the gsoc office hours i think that were held uh, you know i we, those were happening since january or something uh, so that helped you know in community bonding uh, so you know you can join those meetings uh, and you can actually ask your questions verbally if uh, that also helps right so that that was also awesome yeah Okay. Anything we could improve? I, I think I have an idea, but that's not for the application phase. That's the one of the later phases. So. Okay. Is there a shop? No. Uh, I think uh, what Sumit has said, I uh, would reiterate it. It was great that I could find uh, a detailed explanation of what the project could be. And not only that, I could find how I could start contributing uh, to get selected for that potential project. I could find newbie bugs, which I could solve, which was a great way for me to um, you know, initiate uh, or maybe establish a communication channel with the potential mentors, which really helped me in the later stages to um, uh, you know, get feedback uh, for the proposal as well. And already, I think it's it's necessary for a student to understand and realize the the uh, not only the community guidelines but the the, the contributing uh, guidelines for the particular project. And you get to know that when you're uh, raising PRs, you're writing. Uh, I I got to know a lot from marks. PRs and the, the, the way he left reviews before even I started the project, how he expects um, me to uh, uh, create, raise a pull request and how uh, it should uh, be done. So that, that was a great thing. Yes. Yeah. On the mentor side, I uh, would say that the yeah, activity of students also was, let's say, one of the uh, most important uh, inputs for us when making uh, decisions because yeah, for all applications we're actually able to do educated choices of uh, what application we would like to accept and, yeah a lot of this uh, additional information we collected through applications so basically uh, I, well, for all projects uh, we had clear expectation about what would be uh, well, uh, of chances of success and also of additional challenges which uh, might uh, need to be addressed uh, during community bonding and later. It was mostly invisible to students, but as mentors and as author rooms, actually, there was a lot of discussions about that. So for us, it's actually application phase and uh, yeah. Uh, all these newcomer friendly issues, uh, office hours, etc. Uh, they helped us uh, with evaluations a lot. Okay. Anything else to improve? Or should we move on uh, to the next phases? Yeah, I have a point about uh, uh, the, the application phase uh, on what did go well. And I think the, uh, I agree with on the project ideas. Uh, I think we have provided a well, web page include uh, the ideas listed and uh, uh, and uh, the. Uh, and we listed the project ideas with many with the potential mentors, the scope, and even some guidelines. I think that's uh, that could be a a real big reason for the students uh, why they choose Jenkins instead of some other projects. And so I think we should keep 
uh, keep uh, uh, going on that and providing the project ideas already for with details already for the students. And uh, the second uh, highlight about the application phase is, uh, um, I I that uh, Wuli uh, just provided his uh, shared his uh, um, development environment for me, and he just shared it on on GitHub, so I can um, get a quick start and and start hacking Jenkins quickly, and uh, that's uh, uh, that's uh, um, friendly to the newcomers. Yeah, uh, having a quick start guidelines uh, was an expectation for every published project. Uh, I wouldn't say that uh, these guidelines were extensive enough for any of the projects, and it's something we definitely need to study. Uh, but in principle, uh, when we were moving the project idea to the published state, we were requiring a quick start guide and also with some friendly issues to be present. And that yeah. is commented to some extent. So, yeah, we definitely should keep doing that. Okay. So we have eight minutes left. Uh, should we go to community bonding and start discussing that? Because uh, usually people have a lot to say about community bonding. We already uh, covered some items before, and uh, personally, I think that community bonding is actually the most important uh, part of the project. And uh, for the most of the, the projects after community bonding, you can actually forecast whether the project is going to fail or not. Uh, or at least it, you can definitely forecast uh, that it may requires involvement of all admins to succeed. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you see what went well and what you could improve. Um, it would be much appreciated. So. Any feedback? I think from my side, particularly from my project, whatever the challenges I faced, those could have been, personally, I could have been initiated uh, or uh, from, uh, in general, from our team, I think uh, the challenges of planning could have been solved within the community bonding. We were more focused towards uh, actually doing the project. We were more focused towards performance benchmarking and <laughs> eliminating uh, the uh, finding results we could actually use. But uh, we should have first, before that, uh, we should have made sure that um, uh, we need a concrete plan for the whole three months. And I remember that one of the mentors, uh, Parishay, who was um, who did DSOC 2019, he did suggest me to write a design document. And I was, and when I started uh, to write a design document, I was actually, uh, I was, I was um, finding it difficult to write it because for my project, I was not sure uh, in terms of code, in terms of design, what I would design before even. I, I needed to find performance improvements first, and then I would uh, design a way to inculcate those improvements within the plugin. So that was like a step two for my project. But at that time to forecast the whole design was, I, I could not do that. And I remember that I did not publish a design document within that phase, which I did not like personally, but I was I was confused how I, I, I can do it. I did, we did try, um, uh, categorizing how the benchmarks, uh, the, 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 the process of searching the areas within the plugin or how the benchmarks would go, but not the part of how we would implement it. So, uh, I guess that that was something where we, I, I could improve or where we in general could improve. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what would you suggest to change? Hmm. Uh, I'm not, my, yes, Mark. Well, go, go ahead, have, Michelle. Yes. I, uh, I'm actually not sure. I am not sure if this was a problem from, uh, if, if there's something which, 
can be done in terms of uh, maybe uh, maybe submitting a design document by the end of a by the end of the uh, community phase bonding phase could be like uh, i'm not sure I, i'm actually not sure this would me being po pushing to uh, provide uh, an improvement i think it was more uh, of an issue within uh, within our team or with myself rather than the jenkins uh, like the whole gsoft project so I, i i don't think i can suggest an improvement here well but but i think i think it's a valid point that we did not have we as a mentor team we failed to guide and failed to heed parache's good advice that a design document was a good thing and and that was something the mentor team could have encouraged uh it would have shifted the work though and that that would have had a cost right we would have done some of the benchmarking later in favor yes. of doing the design earlier a, a document earlier that was expressing something we didn't yet know and, and but but that's something i think the mentors might be encouraged to to be sure that you have a a a detailed design discussions and the result probably should be a design doc. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah, so maybe we should uh, somehow rework the terminology. So design doc might be confusing. So we expect to see at least uh, forecast, vision, whatever. Mm. Uh, well, to granularity, uh, which would be possible at this stage. Because again, uh, you don't need a design doc just for the design doc. Uh, the whole objective of that is to actually help uh, the team uh, to do the planning. Right. and to ensure mm -hmm. that uh, they can uh, iterate uh, when the coding phase starts. So, do you find uh, design doc terminology confusing from that point of view? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with whatever phrasing because the, the goal was to understand the kinds of things we would be doing and I think we didn't do as good a job in that, in that community bonding. We had really good good interactions and we had really great results but it wasn't as focused on the plan i think as it was on getting started on the results mhm mm yeah okay rishab did it was that a fair way to say it if not feel free to correct me you you're no, welcome no, it, i think it's 100% what i what i want to say but i i i would i would also say that maybe we should ask the other participants that is this something they because i'm not sure if this could be a general improvement to with uh, uh, if you're writing if you're creating a new plugin i think there uh, they would not feel the same or uh, le, le, what i want to say is that we should ask the other participants as well before considering this an improvement because maybe this was something we particularly faced and it was something we could have uh, corrected as a team but in general i think requiring a design document or just telling that to the team is should be enough for them to know that they should plan well before uh, heading into the coding phase mm -hmm. So how uh, would we work it? Mm. Okay. I'm actually not sure if this uh, uh, Sumit or Casey, do you do do, do you feel that uh, this is something which um because i i'm not sure if uh, if we, we want this as an improvement in general because i think if it if it affects everyone then it's okay i i think uh, i think what was something more specific uh, to your project was uh, so 
so you had to do some research and then your entire coding was so if i am getting it correctly i am not sure so correct me if i am wrong that you had to do some research right and uh, later on your entire code was dependent on the results of that research so so i think um, yeah so so that's a that's a tough tough problem in itself right i mean so it's just something that hard to that's hard to predict for you um, so you are really dependent on the research i think the best thing that maybe you can do is <laughs> build a flow chart or something but i'm not sure if uh, that's a so i think that's a i think that's a problem uh, with with a project that's heavily research focused and then you know so i'm not sure if i have a solution for that yes yeah, so, so maybe yeah, to answer, answer yeah. your question yes that uh, i i was not uh, i was not dependent on any research per se that i had to do so so yes that problem was not something we faced but i can see that that's a problem uh, that that a research based project can can face yeah okay so uh, so fair enough i think this is a project based more of a project based problem than a, uh, like something the jenkins um uh, admin or gadmins could do okay so probably i will take an action item just uh, to refine it a bit and actually come up with a proposal how we would change it because i also do not have a clear answer what to do now i understand that it's potentially a problem but well some projects yeah they iterative well uh, assuming that we live in agile world uh, yeah, it's supposed to be like that at the same time uh, we still want to uh, teams to do planning and uh, well, fortunately not the entire jsoc structure is rather waterfall uh, well even if you read uh, jsoc guidelines yeah in our uh, project we rather prefer to do it uh, more continuous but uh, yeah for example even if when you submit evaluation for student uh, basically there is a question of uh, has uh, the code been merged then yeah, mm -hmm. you can uh, answer yes no uh, but uh, well, there is even no notion of continuous integration there or whatever iterations so there is no chance or way to specify like let's say yeah, 50 percent merged or whatever and yeah maybe comes from that specifically so in our case, we definitely advise uh, teams uh, to do replanning at the beginning of each phase to ensure that uh, everything is on track. Um, but yeah, I understand that uh, Rishab's experience with uh, the research-focused project is different. So, okay, I'll uh, take an action item uh, for myself. Okay. And yeah, we are going over time. So again, uh, yeah, retrospective is a bit tedious task. And yeah, our main objective is to collect feedback. So asynchronously, if you could submit feedback for other phrases, so for example, just proposing changes in this uh, Google Doc or submitting feedback form would be much appreciated. And yeah, our admins will be working on merging everything into um, a single document, and then uh, we will keep working on action items. Thanks a lot uh, for all your feedback today. And yeah, if you could provide more feedback as promised, it would be appreciated because it improves the efficiency of these meetings. Okay. okay. So then, uh, thanks all. I'll stop the recording. Mm -hmm. Thank you.